In our last lecture, I challenged you to write a little skit on a thief and his helper who try to steal a huge precious vase. In order to do so, we need to define the two characters' personal characteristics. What did you come up with? Let's compare your solutions to mine. As I mentioned last time, the most critical aspect of a character is how he functions within the clockwork of your dramaturgy. Give the character something of a built-in obstacle, some character trait that makes him stumble over his own legs, so to speak. So I gave my thief a handicap, no hands, and some character flaws. He is way too confident in his skills and takes all other people for suckers. Maybe my skit takes place in old Baghdad, where they used to punish thieves by cutting off their hands. All in all, the thief stands for the fleetingness of things, like the things he used to steal from other people, like the hands which were taken from him. The thief's big, obvious handicap makes him dependent upon his aid, who, let's assume, has two strong arms and hands. Yet again, we need to add some traits that will augment the problem. So let's make him a giant klutz. His desire to give his mother a huge vase as a gift could prove to be a problem once he realizes that the two of them indeed are stealing a huge vase. But why not add another problem augmenting feature like him being scared of snakes? And let's choose a vase as a thingy that looks like that. Now there's trouble ahead for our protagonist. This skit will almost write itself now, won't it? An essential quality of any character is their ability to transform things. We might want to think about them as black boxes where you put in one thing and get out something different. It's like putting a coin in an automat and getting a candy bar in return. This is the way we read characters. How are they acting as interfaces between worlds? as we explained in previous episodes, and how will they usually transform a situation by giving a stimulus-response ratio that we can anticipate. For instance, let's take a funny over-the-top character like the infamous Inspector Clouseau from the Pink Panther franchise. Whatever you offer him, he will desperately try to impress you by turning it into a piece of evidence for his superior skills thus transforming the situation into total chaos. There is a link to a typical scene for that in the description below. There are certain character traits you would not want to alter in the course of the character's arc, or else the character will no longer be decipherable. Take, for instance, the popular figure of Tyrion Lannister from the Game of Thrones series. Viewers knew what they could expect. A sarcastic, sharp persona, somebody who manages to get away with witty remarks and alcohol, but also, and that's the fun part, he would in the end always find a way to outsmart his foes. All this fell apart in the series last season when dumb Hollywood writers followed the fashionable code of subverting expectations in this case, by turning Tyrion into a clueless loser whose advice always turned out to be wrong. Viewers no longer recognized the character, as was the case with many other figures too. The highly anticipated series finale turned out to be a disaster. A character's arc is about his world view, his opinions and how they change over time. The character itself does not change. Character is character. If there is the need to flip a character completely, his change is always also marked by a change of name. The examples given, Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader and Walter White becoming Heisenberg. So bear in mind that movie characters are like Chinese characters. 
they denote something, like this Chinese character can be compared to the appearance of a sheriff on the screen. They both mean law. Never design your movie characters along psychological lines. Movie characters need to be icons. If you look at a figure like a gangster as portrayed by Alain Delon, you realize this isn't a person like you meet every day on the street. Psychology is only there to cover your tracks, so your characters aren't too much on the nose. Speaking of gangsters, let's revisit this scene from an earlier episode. We already established that the plot of an image is ideally revealed by visual means. The simplest way to do so is to use thingies like the revolver in the gangster's hand. Let us now consider what we can do with dialogue. Instead of stating the obvious, like going, this is a stick-up, we can use the spoken words to give a characterization of the person speaking. Where is he from? What's his social class? Is he witty? Fancy? Dull? So, before we conclude, let me give you a practical rule of thumb about the use of dialogue. Show, don't tell, as they say in Hollywood. Come up with smart thingies to tell your story and add depth to your character by not having them talk about what we see anyway. Let me give you, as an example, the dialogue in a specific scene from the series The Wire. Here we watch two Baltimore policemen reopen a murder case by checking on the scene of the crime. This whole action is given in visual terms, while the audio track is devoted to pure police jargon. Click on the link in the description below and enjoy. I hope you didn't mind the profanity. Next week we will look at the ways film characters do things by making use of words. How they trick, manipulate, deceive, seduce and so on. Until then, I wish you a prosperous week and God bless.